So this week on Facebook, there was a post made. Um, it has since been, I think, deleted. I couldn't find it again. But a, a, a particular user was asking a question and said, um, are Kickstarter publishers uh, kind of milking it a bit? Or in other words, are they charging too much to the Kickstarter? And the example he used was, he asked, um, if uh, it had a $100 game, right? Um, a distributor would, would normally pay $40 for that $100 game. So the, you know, so the publisher would only get $40. So the fact that they're charging um, a Kickstarter backer $100 to him seemed excessive. He said he felt like that there could be a bigger discount given uh, to backers considering the fact that they're risking their money. So um, hey, with that idea, what do you think, Marco? You know, as a consumer myself, I'm going to have to agree with him. You know, for the fact that, think about companies such as Simon, Awaken Realms, Monolith. These are all companies that made one to two million dollars on their previous campaigns. And they are established publishers um, which have already deep discounts on uh, distribution, unlike the other people who take advantage of Kickstarter, which are the indie designers, who are brand new, you know, making games. They don't have distribution locked down. You know, they have a lot of external costs that have to come to it. And I think they're taking advantage of us as, as a consumer by charging over, I would say, 200% markup on it. And the reason I come to this conclusion is a perfect example is Fireball Island. If you look at their campaign and you look at the first backer level, it's for retail only and it's for $20. But then you see right next to that is, for us normal backers, $60 with a 55% savings. I mean, $55 savings on that. I don't believe this game is worth, was $115 right there? Um, because it's a game that is made with a bunch of plastics, uh, molds, um, and there's cards. And so I really think they're taking advantage of us, you know, consumers, because of the fact that they are saying, hey, there's this nostalgia asset, uh, I mean, necessity for, or the fear of missing out that they're pushing on us so they can raise the levels of, you know, our commitment to them. So there's a lot to unpack with what you just said. Um, I mean, it's tough because, uh, I mean, you've mentioned like three different things. I'm gonna address them kind of in reverse order because the ones that I remember first. So let me speak first to, um, to the idea of the Fireball Island campaign. So um, in the Fireball Island campaign, it seemed like there was an exorbitant price difference, right? They actually said that you're getting $55 in retail value off of the product. And there's a reason they, they can say that. Um, it, my, my opinion of this, my understanding is that they are um, valuing all of the upgrades they made to the game um, at retail cost. So you could see just how much those would normally cost were they to come out in retail. Do I actually expect them to charge that much? I don't know. But um, generally, as a publisher, what you do is, is you take your manufacturing cost and you add your uh, freight cost to get it, as we call it, landed cost, to get it to the states or wherever you're located before you can ship it to distributors or backers, and you multiply that times that cost by five, and that gives you the MSRP. So what they're doing is they're saying, here's the value of all the upgrades that we paid for um, towards the campaign, multiply times five, that's the MSRP value of that. So, um, but you, you, know, you made an important point, Marco, about uh, the retail pledge, right? You said it was $20. And I wanna tell you, because this may, may be some confusion concerning how retail pledges work and how they and how they how they should work. So, um, so the twenty dollar retail pledge on Fireball Island isn't actually twenty dollars for a game. Um, what it is is the retailer is buying in for twenty dollars. Kind of think about it, twenty dollars down, and twenty dollars down gets you the opportunity as a retailer to then later buy product from Restoration Games uh, to sell in your store. So really, uh, retailers are probably going to be paying fifty percent of whatever the proposed MSRP is. And so um, it's important to understand that they're not getting it for twenty dollars. Twenty dollars is what they're committing because um, usually these games, especially Kickstarter games, can take nine months, a year, sometimes or longer, to um, to actually get to the backers. Well, same thing for retailers. If you put if you had to put all the money down in front as a retailer, you're tying up a lot of cash that could be used as cash flow to produce to get more games in and sell more games. So that was your first point. Uh, let's go back. What was your second? Point? That was about Simon uh, and Awaken Realms, you know, who've made these, you know, a million to two million dollar, you know, um, previous campaigns. Yeah. You know, and they're established publishers who already have a distributor locked down, 
and great rates with them. Yeah, you have a that you have a really good case there. It's hard to it's hard to argue that. And like as far as like what is the purpose of Kickstarter, right? Um, so I'm a I'm an indie publisher myself. I work for Doomsday Robots a Game Company, and we have one title to our name. So whatever I'm going to tell you, uh, take that with with whatever salt you need to take it with. And in, in that I'm not a big publisher. I don't necessarily maybe understand all the ins and outs of what they deal with, but I'll at least speak from my perspective, okay? So when we fund our campaign and we ask you to pay either full MSRP or close to full MSRP, what you're allowing us to do is you're helping us fund our company. You're not just giving us, let's say I, you know, I made a, a $50 game. You're not just giving us the, uh, actually let's just go back to a $100 game. Let's say make a $100 game because it's easier to do the percentages. Um, you're not just giving me the $20 I need to make your copy. Um, you're supplying me with, so I can make a thousand, two thousand, three thousand units of that game, so that not only can I fulfill your copy, but also that I have enough to be able to have a long tail of later retail sales. Now the thing is, as a small publisher like me, um, we're not going to see distribution. In fact, if we talk, you know, I hope we talk one day about Kickstarter exclusives, right. because a lot of small campaigns, without even intending to be, end up being Kickstarter exclusives. Yeah, I know. Right? But back to the Simon thing. So as a small publisher, um, we use that upfront capital to be able to fund our future projects. Not only pay our pay our wages, but actually be able to fund future projects. So we need every dollar that's coming in when it comes down to that. Um, but you know, you make a great point, Marco, about 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 the bigger publishers. And you know, frankly, you know, they're capitalists when it comes down to it, and they see an opportunity. It's a great marketing tool to be able to raise money and to gauge interest in a game. Um, I, I'm having a hard time uh, deflecting for them. I think what you need to ask them to ask to defend right. their high prices. Right? I mean, it's <laughs> the fact that I feel like they're abusing the system of Kickstarter mm -hmm. at this point. You know, first time when it's like they're bringing in new designers, they're taking a, you know, a risk. So you're doing a risk reward type thing. So why not use Kickstarter for that? Mm -hmm. But now they're using their established, successful designers, you know, in their games to back more stuff on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. So it's taking advantage of not only you and me, you know, as me, the customer, and Bryn, the, uh, I mean, the publisher, uh, it's taking advantage of everyone, I, th I think, in this case. Well, let me say, speak a couple things to that. One, me as the publisher, I actually, I'm a small publisher. I benefit from bigger publishers bringing in more people in the Kickstarter. So, yeah, I can look at Rising Sun or, or even Exploding Kittens and say, oh my gosh, they didn't need Kickstarter for that, right? But the number of people and number of eyes and faces that they brought to Kickstarter in that time, and you just see the backer counts during that period, just exploded, right? Um, some of those people see my campaigns, right? And, and you know, they say a rising tide you know, raises all boats. Well, in my case, um, the more popular Kickstarter is, the more likely I am going to be to fund, at least until this bubble bursts, if there is indeed a bubble. But I do want to speak to one th important thing about why the original question was, by the original um, the, the original poster was, why can't Kickstarter uh, creators and publishers offer deeper discounts to backers? I mean, after all, backers are putting their money on the line, too. Right. Okay, great. So here's actually why. Um, let's go with that $100 game idea, right? So at the $100 game MSRP that you expect to, that, that they say is worth $100, if uh, that means they're going to be able to sell it to a distributor, assuming they have distribution for forty, okay. So the idea is why pay? Why does the backer pay a hundred? Why can't they get some sort of discount? Why can't they pay like seventy or seventy-five, some sort of deeper discount? And this is a this is the thought process within the industry. If you sell your game, if your publisher sells their game that they claim is a hundred dollars, and they sell it at seventy or seventy-five, in the mind of the consumer, from now and forever. It's a seventy to seventy-five dollar game. The problem is, is if they then value that product, still at hundred dollars, and they charge a distributor forty, that distributor charges the retailer. Remember, your FLGS, fifty dollars for that unit that they can and then only sell realistically for seventy seventy-five. So what what that really comes down to is now the retailer has to sell twice as many units as he did have to sell in order to make the same amount of money he would have made from selling one at MSRP. And that really is the reason why publishers can't just deeply discount their product unless they're going to go Kickstarter exclusive. Well, I mean, that's another topic that we need to discuss because uh, honestly, you know, with Kickstarter exclusive, that's going to be something that's I have a lot to talk about as well. Uh, but I mean, I, I guess I can't disagree with that point at all. You know, yes, you know, you put a value on something, you diminish that value, that it's always going to be at the diminished value. But at the same time, we are now contributing to your company. That's, right. That's how I see it, is we're not just investing in the game, we're investing into your company. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know and I feel that we we as a consumer she kind of get a little bit better of a deal and I agree with you I agree with you and this is how like this is how we do it for instance we do believe in giving a little bit of a discount Uh, 10% usually not that big of a deal right at least it's not gonna hurt the retail arm that much people expect to get a little bit of a discount with with Kickstarter but the big thing we try to do is subsidize shipping Um, there's a lot of costs that just go into getting the product from us to you or specifically if you're a if you're a if you're a US producer like I am um, and you're gonna ship that product to to Europe um, the EU that can get in a whole thing there but we're talking about a 20 percent sales tax charged off the retail value of the product whatever they paid for it on the Kickstarter so what they get charged for that or, or we could charge excuse me um, for that uh, just to ship that product to them so um, we're taking a lot of hits along the way as well in fact I can honestly say with Bridges to Nowhere right that our shipment of our base game our basic Bridges to Nowhere two-player game to people in Europe is probably gonna break even at best now the deluxe game, which was more expensive, right? We did offer a discount on that too, but the more deluxe expensive deluxe game, we'll make a little bit of money on. But but really, you know, that's very expensive. Um, Shipping is very expensive, and so we try to make sure that our Kickstarter backers get some value for it. But a lot of times, that doesn't come with diminished MSRP. It comes with in the form of exclusives. It comes in the form of reduced shipping costs, if not free shipping costs, and it comes with hopefully the idea that the the you the backer will get it earlier than anybody else will. All right. And I think that's great, you know, and especially for any designer, I mean, kind of what you have to do to compete now with these bigger publishers that are coming to Kickstarter. Yeah. And I guess that's another issue I have is the fact that with a bigger publisher, they don't care if you they get you specifically your, your donation or your money because they know they're going to pull, you know, anywhere between 5,000 to 10,000 people just by saying, hey, we have a new game. We're releasing it. And that, you know, like, what was it? Blood Rage, uh, not Blood Rage, um, what's the latest one? Hate. Hate. You know, it it came out with a commercial, you have, what, uh, a week ahead of time? And then all of a sudden, you know, Kickstarter exclusive from the guy who made Blood Rage. I can't remember his name right now, I'm sorry. Eric Lang. Eric Lang. Eric Lang. Yes. Eric Lang, okay. And (laughs) so you have this game. I'm sorry, Eric. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please watch our show. <laughs> anyway, you had this game from from Eric Lane, yeah, uh, Lang, and all of a sudden, here we go. That's yeah. it. You know, yeah. it's, you know, you bring up, you brought a hate. Why'd you bring up hate? We we need to really need to do a segment on Kickstarter exclusives because hate know. was a Kickstarter exclusive. I know. Like I said, I and wouldn't it, do it. And I, it performed very differently than what we expected, than what what, what frankly what the industry expected. So uh, we'll have to talk about that another time. Yes. But yeah. Any other questions? No, I, I think, you know, do you have anything else that you want to inform us as backers about Kickstarter or, you know, cost? Um, yeah, actually, you're giving me the closing thought. I am. And I'll take it. So to the backer who wrote the post, I feel your pain. Because, you know, a lot of us, uh, especially indie publishers, we're also backers, right? We understand that it does feel like, you know, I'm putting a lot of money in right now that for a game that, one, may not get made. That happened recently. Everyone knows about this, the Terminator and the other games there. Um, that's another discussion for another time. But really, um, we feel your pain on that, but understand that there are a lot of forces at work from not only supporting ourselves and our new companies, but also actually supporting the end retailer, who ultimately, without the end game retailer, uh, there is no game.